you guys just can't imagine how large this site is. Everybody just shows the treasury and maybe the theater, maybe the church, but it's so much bigger. Welcome to Petra. Welcome back to the Gallup Anthropologists. I am glad you guys are here. Petra is amazing and we covered most of the normal things last week, but we wanted to show you some of the things that you should definitely see on top of us. Right, so there's a lot of sections of Petra that's what we're gonna call off trail. Like no one ever goes there and we got to see some amazing things and we got one of the best views of the entire site. And if you guys don't remember from last week, the map that they give you kind of sucks. So I made one from Google Earth and just to kind of map out where we were going. One of the cool things about this place is that there's so many of these houses and tombs that aren't even listed on the map. Really taken in by how much of this is actually still lived in. I carry around a tent. You can just live up in here. And as we got close to where we were headed, we did find a pretty detailed map. I just had to put it back together. So this is what archaeologists do all day. We put together puzzles. Have it upside down. This one goes here. Okay, all right. You might be able to read this at the end. That's the hope. That's uh, a part that allows me to read it in English. It's gone. It's gone. That's probably on purpose. So we know that something is 156 and a half meters by 74 meters, and it was originally built by somebody. In today, in its original state, the blank positioned along the trade routes, probably. I fort. Think. And there was a fort built. So we're going to go up to a fort. It looked like it was up here. Probably up there. Along the trade routes, unless it's talking about this down here. Is a fort. We came to find out that this was Al Habis, which was a mountain with several structures on it. But one of the most obvious structures was the Crusader Fort from the 12th century. And you could still see a lot of it. You could tell it was more modern than most of the Roman, especially more modern than the Nabataean stuff. As you would have climbed up here, they've got all these modern stairs now built and whatever, but these are very old stairs here. You can see where the door has rubbed and they would have had the door built out with a post down here. And so you'd build a wood lentil across the top, most likely, maybe even a stone one, and then you would have your door would be a pole, and then it would rotate here. And whatever it was was coarse enough to wear on this, although we've already shown the sandstone here is very easy to wear on. That's really cool. Over hundreds and hundreds of years it wore this in. And so you're going to see a lot of this on today's episode. There are places where things fall off of cliffs and you can no longer go any further. But luckily on this one, someone took the time to build a bridge, let's call it. It was a little rickety and a little bit shaky as you went across it. But you really do want to get up to the top because the view is amazing and there's some cool little hidden things here and there for you to check out. So somewhere, possibly up top, there was a temple because we've got a triglyph here. And uh, this would have gone in between some carvings, maybe just the flowers, but usually of like battles or things in the light, whatever, the god or whatever. We're gonna go up and see if we can find it. But just seeing this, just sitting here, someone set it on this pedestal for us so that we can notice. But if you don't know what you're looking at, you don't know that this is Roman era and that it was part of the top of the temple. Cool to find it here, that flower's beautiful also. I love getting off trail. So we're definitely off trail here. We're up on top of a rock that we were told to go around. Uh, but uh, we found a really cool wall here. There's another wall up there with a the structure. The only thing that I can see labeled at all is it says all hobbies here. And of course that's not on our map to tell us what it is. I do want to keep going up here because it's really interesting. We found three or four other pieces of 
what looked to be like the top of the temple. And it has to roll down. It's not like somebody carried it up here to confuse people. So either the temple was right here or the temple was up here that rolled down. But either way, we're going to keep going a little bit as long as it's safe. Always be safe and always make sure that you're on stable footing. There have been people who have walked through here. There's definitely a trail of other people that have done this. So this way we won't cause too much erosion. And we're just gonna go see what we can see and give you a little extra access here. So we're up above the unfinished tube that's below us. And there's this stairway down here. And it only goes about 10 more feet. And then you fall precipitously about 50 or 60 feet to your death. Now, it could be one of two things. They have these giant cisterns up here where they would collect water, and this would have given them an area to access that and just drop down and get water, which is what I think, because if you're gonna live up here at all, you have to have access to water. But there's also the possibility that there's like an upper chamber to the tomb that's down there. I don't see any light coming into it down there, so I doubt it, but when we go down, we'll see if we can see. Sometimes they have these windows made so that you can see into it, so that might be what it is also. By the way, it's really cool, and I'm glad we came up here to see it, but I'm not going any further down because if I slip, it was cool up there, but we wanted to head down because I wanted to see these unfinished tombs. I know there were a few of them, but there was one that was particularly really interesting. I think they call it the Columbarium, and it had really interesting walls. Yeah, I call it Lego my ego. It looks just like a waffle. <laughs> and then it was time to get to our next spot, which we showed you last week. And so we're gonna kind of fast forward through that really quick, and we're gonna get you back off trail. We're gonna go back behind the Blue Church, mm -hmm. and that was really epic. We're attempting to find our way over to the church, but we missed our path that we were gonna take. So we're trying to find a way to connect to it. We're not really on a path now. I mean, it's a little paved, like probably locals might use it, uh, but wish us luck. At least we can see pretty far out here. Especially if you get up on one of these ridges, you can see the whole place. That's what I'm hoping for out of this, is get up to the top of this mm -hmm. and just see everywhere and maybe we'll find our trail. That'd be nice. Either way, it's beautiful. Once again, because we went off trail, I made a little map just to kind of show you where we went so you guys could replicate it if you wanted to. Because honestly, it was one of the coolest parts of the site and like, no one does this. So this is part of the wall here. You can see it going in a straight line. And uh, outside the city, inside the city. And so this would have protected it. I heard it was at least 10 feet tall, although there's not much of it left that's at that point. One of the cool things here, we're gonna go outside of the city for a second. It's nice to be off trail for a minute. There literally is pottery just strewn everywhere out here. And uh, we got a nice arch. It's gonna be great for Instagram. And uh, looks like some of the People who lived up here had built up walls to make this into more of a cave. It lived here before like a, a lean-to because you don't have walls all around, you just got two walls. But it would protect you from the rain, at least a little bit. And uh, the view is amazing. One of the best parts about going off trail is you never know what you're going to find. Yeah, this is a tomb. I think so. I mean, it's bigger than most of the tombs. It's a cistern. It's not dug up. There's another one over here. So you just got like the family tomb. These are your family caves. Family tomb. There's someone who actually lives in this cave over here. So we'll give them some space. That's a little leg to some sort of uh, possibly ceremonial something or other that had a flat bottom. That's a tight piece right there, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> dude, this is going to be the longest video ever. We're going to keep finding everything. So we're going to have a secret video or something. Or we're just going to show all our family and friends 
for an archaeologist, like if we found this when we were digging, um, especially if it was painted or something in the Maya world, it would be amazing. It's got really cool color. You can tell it was actually made here because it's like a lot of color of the sand. It's a cool piece. And it stays where it came from. Ooh. Look, I got a whole cup handle. Nice. Oh, that's a really pretty piece. That was all painted. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Holy cow. So here's another example of something. This has got part of the base and part of the rim of a small little, probably for like olive oil, to dip your stuff in olive oil or something small like that, maybe some herbs. There's like a double handle here that Brendan's about to pick up. That's pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> Dude, I'll leave it here, mm -hmm. you know. Here's another triglyph. Roman triglyph. Pretty cool that you can just touch it. I mean, the perks of being somewhere where like no one else goes. And once you've walked far enough out of town, it's time to get back into town because you're staring over at the royal tombs the whole time and you're like, well, that place is so cool. But you have to go through this wash that you wouldn't be able to do if it was a wet season and it looks like only goats use it now. But we were able to cross over there safely. Yeah, I'm really glad we were able to get over there because the Royal Tombs were pretty awesome, especially that last one. And if you guys want to see all of the Royal Tombs and everything else we saw, definitely check out last week's video. It was awesome. But once we got done with that, we wanted to go up a little higher because we heard there was this awesome view of the theater. Yeah, this is an awesome spot. All the tombs overlooking the theater. This is the off the beaten trail view of the theater and the theater is amazing. A lot of the theaters that we see were constructed out of block after block after block and like everything else the Navateans did, they didn't want to have to build it so they just carved it. And so this is like 2300 years old at least. It sat 4,000 people and we've got this viewpoint all to ourselves with tombs and unfortunately a couple of water bottles. But uh, once again, this off the trail thing is rock star. Enjoy in every minute. Pretty cool. I don't know what it is. Maybe individual stalls for your horses. Um, maybe individual beds. Like maybe this was where you could stay. Like this was the inn. That's about the right length to just like set up a cot in here. So I think this is the inn. Mm -hmm. It's also possible that this is also just another big tomb because a couple of these are dug in like the tombs were. It was both. They made a tomb there and then had a statue of the person if they were really important here. I don't know. Like I said, if you know, comments, let me know. And we didn't even make you a map for this one because honestly, we didn't know where the heck we were going. We were like, oh, well, there's stairs up that wall. Let's go up that wall. And so we ended up chasing stairs. Now we're really off trail. <laughs> like on some old, worn down Nabataean trails. Back up that way. See what we can get to this way. I don't know if you guys can see it, but where we were trying to go is those stairs right there. But something happened and they fell off. <laughs> there they are right here. They took it off this way. So uh, we will not be climbing those stairs. We're gonna go back here where it looks like there used to be stairs and see if we can keep going up. <laughs> we're out here being mountain goats too. There's another cool arch. If this was Utah, you would have like 1,200 people trying to take a selfie with that. So, they got us on to Utah, right? Oh yeah, there's the stairs. There's where we're going, baby. Nice. You come up here, you can say hi to my friend, Joe. 
And there's so many of these stairs. I think our ultimate goal is to try to get up to where we can see a view of the treasury where we didn't have to pay for it. So we'd go up one set of stairs and then those would just fall off. And then we'd go up another one and then those would fall off. And we kept doing this for quite a bit. I think this footage is just about me showing my ass like the whole time, but uh, it was really adventurous and awesome. And then we got to a place where we thought we were like as far as we could go. We shot this little wrap up that you can't hear here because we didn't want to be redundant when we actually did it. But then we looked over to our side and saw that there was a goat making its way over to another set of stairs. And we we're like, hey, if a goat can do it, we can do it. We don't necessarily recommend doing this trail unless you're really confident in your footing and you're a pretty experienced trekker. Because um, there's definitely some some sketchy parts and you gotta make sure you find hand holes. It's still really cool though, so another dead end. Uh, you can see where the staircases are, but there's just you know erosion and thousands of years. And those just stairs just fall off, off again. Yep. Sometimes you just gotta be safe no matter how adventurous you feel. We didn't bring any climbing gear or anything like that, so. And it's getting closer to dark because it gets dark here really early, so we wanna get back to the treasury and we might do an Instagram live and go call my wife and share this with her. It's always good to bring somebody you love here. It'd be awesome to bring everybody you loved here. And after you're done climbing around there, we suggest that you actually climb to the view we were looking for, even if it means you have to pay for a little bit of tea. Yeah, and if you guys want to see that, you'll have to go back to last week's video. That was one of the highlights. But here's a little sneak peek of it, and, and it, is, it is well worth it. I'm glad we had enough time to do that. And then by the time we were getting down, the sun was coming down, so we had to decide whether we were going to do Petra at night or when we talked to the guy at the hotel, he's like, you know what, there's this really cool place right next to the hotel that's even better. Yeah, so we climbed up this hill and we got to watch the sunset, which was beautiful. But I think that the highlight of that was really just like the competing and echoing calls to prayer mm -hmm. as you're watching the sun go down. It was one of the quintessential kind of Muslim moments that we had on this trip. Hey guys, so we planned on going to Petra by the night tonight, but we did a little research and we talked to the guy in the hotel and he said it's really not worth the money, but he did recommend going up to this mountain view of the sunset and you can see all of the city and when the sun goes down you can actually see parts of Palestine and even Egypt, which is just crazy. Um, so far it's a really beautiful sunset and we'll let you know it's pretty dark and cold up here so we are going to try to stay once the sun goes down but we might have to play it by ear but either way this has been a really great day and a great start to our Petra trip. Yeah the sunset was pretty chill and definitely worth it. Yeah and I'm glad that we weren't able to be up there too long because we needed to get back to the hotel and go to sleep because the next day we were going to the monastery. I was really looking forward to that. That's what we're going to be showing next week. We went to Little Petra, the monastery. We also went on this really cool hike and it was really awesome. I hope you guys are enjoying this series so far and that you guys find yourself in Jordan soon, in Petra. And as always, find yourself on the journey. journey.